SpotlightMediaStudios.com. Welcome to Education Unfiltered. Here is Mary Stucco. Good morning. This is Mary Stucco with Education Unfiltered, where we talk all things higher ed, and that can look like a lot of different things. I'm so excited for today's show. We're talking with about Central Michigan University's actuarial science program that provides an in-depth academic program paired with the Gamma Iota Sigma to provide wide access to industry professionals and future career outlooks for actuarial students. The combination of professional and academic development offered by these programs allow for the students who are interested in the actuarial science to succeed. CMU's actuarial program provides coursework for the first three actuarial exams, all of the required V courses, and that's V-E-E, and and weekly meetings to expose students to alumni and working actuaries. So today we are joined by John Daniels, who's a professor of statistics and co-director of the actuarial science program at Central Michigan University. We're also joined by Zach Honus, who is the undergraduate student majoring in actuarial science, statistics, and economics at Central Michigan University. And we're also joined by Matt Alashari, who's a recruiter at Auto Owners and Insurance. Welcome, gentlemen. Good morning. Uh, So today we are going to talk a lot about actuarial science. So to get started, um, and I'll start with you, uh, John, what is an actuary? I wish someone had explained this to me uh, a number of years ago when I was in school. Before you got into it? (laughs) I would have gotten into it exactly. Exactly. Uh, An actuary models risk, okay? Um, And that is a very generic term. But if you uh, think about it for a second, think about your parents or friends or family, and think about for a moment how many insurance policies they might have. Now, I have an insurance policy for my car. I have one, you know, health insurance through CMU. Uh, I have um, insurance on my home. Uh, and other uh, people would have insurance on other personal possessions like boats, planes, trains, and all that stuff. So if you take the number of insurance policies a typical family would have and multiply it by perhaps 100 million households in this country, you get an idea of how big the insurance industry is. The insurance industry wants to know, for large numbers of clients, what is going to happen. And what an actuary does is utilize this mathematical models to try to figure out what is going to happen, how much should we charge our clients for insurance, um, you know, whether it's for hurricanes or for floods or just a deer running in front of your car. There's all types of situations where you need insurance. And so most of the actuarial students end up working in the risk management industry. Uh, Auto owners is a very big uh, employer. uh, They hire a lot of our students, but there's consulting firms that handle pensions and health insurance for companies like General Motors and Ford. You might have heard of those companies before. (laughs) Uh, Delta Dental is another uh, employer of ours, but... Basically, most actuaries uh, do a lot of mathematical modeling for insurance companies. They also can work for banks. They, they, they do work in the financial services sector also, but it's a very, very large profession, and uh, they do need people that know how to work with a computer and build mathematical models. So that's sort of what it's all about. As I said, when I got out of school, It was engineering or computer science. Mm -hmm. Never even heard what an actuary was. Had no idea what an actuary was. But uh, Zach is uh, is an actuarial science student. He probably knows even more about it than I do. But in a nutshell, that's what it is. That's great. And I'll get to you, Zach, in just uh, just a minute. First, I want to ask you, John, why is there a major in actuarial science? Why is there a major in actuarial science? Or why should they? Yeah. Well, Um, Well, I would say, if you were to consider two important aspects of it, uh, high pay, low stress. That's a good combination. That's a great combination. But you have to probably like math, it sounds like. Yeah, there's a a tremendous amount of mathematics that goes into it. I mean, it's not for the, uh, it's not a a cupcake major. Uh, Mm -hmm. It's a lot of calculus, probably three semesters of calculus. 
um, uh, another class called mathematical statistics, uh, predictive modeling. There's also accounting, econ, and finance. We do try to give the students a well-rounded business background. Uh, we want them to be good at communicating. Uh, the old days of the really smart math person being hidden in the back room and you only bring them out when you need them <laughs> is, o- is over. Is over. <laughs> we want people that are, that are well-rounded. Um, computers have taken a lot of the heavy-duty number crunching where you have to actually sit there and derive things and do integrations and derivatives and all kinds of crazy stuff. Computers have helped us out with a lot of that. But it still requires somebody that is, is very well-rounded. They can do the math, but they can also maybe stand up in front of a group of people and communicate with them and talk to them and, and, and try to um, you know, explain what we're doing and why we're doing it. So you really have to be, you have to be exceptional at any one thing, uh, but you've got to be pretty good at a lot of things. That's very interesting. Now, Zach, I'm going to get to you. So you must be pretty well-rounded because they're putting you on a podcast. So you must be re- able to relate well to people. Would you say that? Uh, yeah, I'd say so. Um, I think that uh, throughout my time at uh, Central, I've kind of become um, uh, one of the people that can kind of communicate between the professors and the students when it comes to actuarial science and the, the major. Mm-hmm. Now, how has CMU prepared you for you? Now, what year, what year are you in school? Uh, I'm a senior, so I'm okay. graduating in just a couple of weeks now. So. Oh, excellent. So so tell us about, you know, being a student at Central in the actuarial science program, and what have they been doing to get you ready to go? Yeah, so uh, I'd say by and far the largest aspect that sets CMU's program apart um, is, uh, like you mentioned in the uh, introduction, um, Gamma Iota Sigma. Um, basically what Gamma is um, is a professional organization that we have on campus that tries to kind of fill that void um, that classrooms and, and textbooks can't always answer. It's the, the question of how do you get from studying actuarial science to being an actuary? Um, and it's a, it's a difficult question um, that a lot of students have when they go to college, right? It's, it's how do I take these skills and do something with them? Because what we do at CMU and, and through Gamma um, is we get a lot of industry professionals into the classroom, into meetings with students, um, so that students are able to kind of see all the options that they have in front of them. Um, so like Dr. Daniel said, there's a lot of options in the insurance industry and the consulting industries um, in every industry for actuaries to succeed. Uh, so we bring representatives in um, to talk about those companies, to talk about their jobs uh, and how they got from sitting in a classroom to their jobs. So, yeah, I think that's, that's the main thing that sets CMU apart is kind of that professional development aspect, the ability to, to show students a pathway to succeed. That's so, that's so interesting. Now, tell me, have you had any internships or are you going to be doing one? Yeah, so I interned the last two summers, actually, at Auto Owners uh, with MAP. Um, and I have accepted a full-time job that I'll be starting there in just a couple of weeks. <gasps> Congratulations. That's so exciting. So let's segue over to Matt now with auto owners. Um, tell me some things that a student should be doing if they are looking to go into actuarial science to help prepare them for a career. Sure. There's uh, quite, a, quite a few different things. As uh, John mentioned, being a well-rounded student uh, is becoming more and more valuable uh, every month, every week, every year. Um, so I guess starting with, you know, you do need that strong mathematical background, and a lot of times that comes through with your grades. Um, another aspect that that comes through with is can you, have you pa- can you or have you passed actuarial exams in college? Um, I actually p- personally graduated with an actuarial science degree back in 2017 uh, okay. from Michigan State. Excellent. Um, and and in, those, in these most recent four years, um, the actuarial um, field has gotten significantly more competitive, even in just the last four years. Um, So, you know, having that academic um, kind of baseline of a strong GPA, some exams passed, um, but then at the same time, um, we're finding more and more needs for actuaries to be able to present, uh, whether that's presenting in a team setting, whether that's presenting to upper-level management, um, and being able to communicate. Um, and so being able to uh, work on those professional development skills, whether that's through GIS, whether that's through the Career Center, um, and develop interviewing skills and develop um, some of those skills that you don't learn, you know, studying by yourself, um, kind of being able to do both sides of um, 
that, both from a people perspective and an academic perspective, is, is so valuable. Absolutely. Um, now, tell me too. You guys have mentioned a couple times about actuarial exams. So, yeah, let me, uh, yeah let talk me a little bit about that. Just a second. Sure. A lot of times, I will meet with parents and high school seniors that are, you know, somewhat familiar with. At least they've gone online. They've Googled actuaries. They know about the Society of Actuaries, and they say, "What about these exams? What can you tell me about these exams?" Uh, it's very basic. The Society of Actuaries um, is, a, is the national organization that sort of oversees actuaries, and they put out these exams. It's equivalent to when an accountant would take a CPA exam to be a certified public accountant, or an attorney would, after law school, would take the bar exam mm-hmm. to be able to practice law. Society of Actuaries, uh, and it's, it's an ever-moving target, but they have, believe it or not, eight exams that actuaries can take for various certifications. At CMU, we actually, in theory, have preparatory classes for four of those exams. Um, you go and sit in the class, and the professor will try to get you ready, teach you the concepts that you need to pass the SOA exam. They're actually offered in Lansing and Grand Rapids and other places, uh, like every three, four months. Uh, you go to the testing site. You sit down, you pay your fee, it's a three-hour exam, um, it's pass-fail. Mm-hmm. You either pass it or you fail it, and you find out about that. If you fail the exam, so what? You can take it again, and again, mm-hmm. and again, and again. No employer is going to ask you, how many times did you have to take P exam to pass the probability exam? Or how many times did you have to take financial mathematics to pass that exam? They don't care. They want you to pass the exam. That's all that really matters. So what we try to do is get you ready for the exam. We want you to take the exam. And, boy, I'll tell you what, when a student comes to my office and says, Dr. Daniels, I passed my P exam, I pat him on the back. I'm so happy for him. Mm-hmm. And, by the way, um, we have a scholarship at CMU, the Miles Scholarship. We'll give you the exam money back if you pass. Oh, we'll that's pay you awesome. for that, too. So we're, we're really trying hard to, to get these exams. But students, some students are just afraid of them. Don't be afraid. Just keep taking it until you pass it. You'll get there. Yeah, that's a kind of good approach. Take a little pressure off. Um, so, Matt, how important is it that they pass these exams before they apply at auto owners? Sure. So we technically uh, do not require an exam to be passed uh, to work at auto owners. Um, For actuaries that are currently working at auto owners, we don't require them to continue to pass exams. Um, However, as I mentioned before, the uh, field is getting more and more and more competitive. Um, So most um, strong candidates we see now are graduating with two, if not three, exams passed. Um, So it definitely helps you stand out. Um, you know, but if you do get to the end of, you know, college, let's say you were working, you know, a lot of hours during the week, you got really good grades and you just, you know, didn't have time to study um, because of those things, you know, that's understandable too. And so we wouldn't necessarily just write you off because of that. Uh, but if you do have that opportunity and that time to put into studying and passing exams while you're in college, um, that is going to help you tremendously. Okay, good to know. So, Zach, have you taken any of these tests yet? Yeah, so I've actually passed the first three actuarial exams, so that's PFM and IFM. Um, okay. I just took IFM this last uh, December. Great. Well, good job. And we only want you to, we only try to get you to pass one at CMU. If you pass one, that opens up so many doors for you. But as uh, Matt said, it's not critical. But we'd like you to pass one exam. Two makes you special. Three makes you Elite. So I would call Zach elite. I know of only two students in 15 years that have passed three exams before they graduate. So um, it's not required. It's not essential. But, you know, if you're sitting there with one or two or even three exams passed, I can almost assure you, and I'm a statistician, so my job is to predict the future. But if you're active in, <laughs> if you're active in Gamma Iota Sigma yeah. and you've passed at least one exam, I can almost, almost guarantee you a job before you graduate yeah yeah and and there you go that you just proved that point because you've already got the job lined up right zach i do and i also like to point out that i actually got my first internship with auto owners without having any exams passed Mm -hmm. at that point i was planning to take one 
um, but I hadn't yet even sat for an exam, and they still were able to, to take that chance on me. So there's definitely options out there um, if you haven't quite taken the exams um, or if you're worried about applying because you haven't taken exams still, uh, by all means, reach out, apply to jobs um, because opportunities do exist. Right. And probably by having the internship, was it in the actuarial science department? Your first? Yeah. yeah. So, I, yeah so you had a pretty good idea at this actuarial. point. Yeah, yeah. So that probably helped you decide that that's what you wanted to do, right? Yeah, um Definitely. Excellent. Well, I want to thank you all for joining us. We had Zach Conus, who's an undergraduate student majoring in actuarial science and statistics and economics at Central Michigan University. John Daniels, professor of statistics. And we also have uh, Matt Alashari from Auto Owners Insurance. This is Mary Stucco with Education Unfiltered. Thank you so much for joining us. And today I'd like to thank our sponsors, Davenport University, Auto Owners Insurance, and SETSEG. SETSEG has offered specialized insurance services to Michigan's public education community for more than 50 years. They offer uh, customized employee benefit solutions, comprehensive workers' compensation coverage, and the largest property casualty consortium in the state. Visit setseg.org to learn more about their program. Have a wonderful day.